story you'll see only on NBC 12. A family suing some workers from the Richmond Police Department and the Richmond Ambulance Authority after a 32-year-old man dies in their custody following an incident at his own home. That's Joshua Lahan being forced to the ground after his roommate called 911, claiming he needed mental health treatment. When Lahan said he did not need treatment, the situation escalated. His loved ones say this police body camera video reveals excessive force that resulted in his death. It happened back in 2018, but just last month, three judges decided the first responders in this case are not automatically protected against liability and suggested the case could move forward. It is perhaps one of the worst pains a mother could ever endure. It seems like it's always there every day. Um, doesn't go away. The death of your own child. He was an incredible kid. Angie Lahan's incredible kid had grown to become a 32-year-old man. Joshua Lahan battled mental health challenges. He took prescription medication to help him live a normal life a life that included being a dad. That was the most important thing in his life. Here he is with his now 11-year-old at an elementary school function some four years ago. Since that was the father-daughter dance. You look happy in that picture. I was. I was happy to see all my friends at school and to be there with him. Happy days that are now a distant memory. Joshua's life was cut short back in January of 2018 when Richmond police and EMS workers showed up to his home here on Stockton Avenue. Right. We're here to help you, buddy. We're not here to hurt you. His roommate at the time said Joshua hurt his head. She feared he may have been a danger to himself. When authorities arrived, he was bleeding. When they tried to take him into a mental hospital, Joshua told them he didn't need to go. He said he had fallen after taking too much of a medicine. Put your hands, put your hands behind your back. Now. Instead of leaving when asked, first responders force him to the ground and handcuff him. Four people on his, uh, on, pushing on his back while his hands are behind his back and his abdomen is on the ground and his face is in a pillow. That goes on for almost six minutes and the results are predictable. Joshua is heard saying, I can't breathe. And then there's no movement. I saw that when they turned him over, he was dead. I mean, you could see it in his eyes. I wanted to jump through the video. I wanted to just scream in my head. I was screaming, turn him over, turn him over. Start CPR, start CPR. He became unresponsive and died at a hospital two days later. Now the family has filed a $25 million wrongful death lawsuit against the two police officers and the two EMS workers who showed up to his home. I did some digging. I found out that one of the employees from the Richmond Ambulance Authority who responded to the scene is no longer with the department although it isn't clear whether that has anything to do with this case. And one of the officers from the Richmond Police Department has since retired. Their defense attorneys asked a judge to throw the lawsuit out. They appealed when the judge refused. And just last month, a three-judge panel with the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals released this opinion, saying the 32-year-old quote, could not have posed any risk to the safety of the officers or others. He did not actively resist or attempt to evade, continuing to apply force to a secured, unarmed man constitutes excessive force. He had done nothing illegal. We're held to a standard where we can't engage in conduct that's dangerous to a police officer. They uh, can engage in conduct that is um, fatal to, uh, to us. And uh, in this instance, there's been no accountability. I said I could have saved him if I'd been there. I could have saved him. But they treated him as if he was not even human. There have been no criminal charges in the case. When I reached out to the Commonwealth's attorney to ask why, she pointed to the fact that a different CA was at the helm back in 2018. 
The Richmond Ambulance Authority tells me a person can deny medical treatment only if they are deemed to be competent. If not, the organization says there are several instances where restraint is necessary to accomplish that. I also reached out to the Richmond Police Department, a representative saying they are reviewing the department's general orders and taking a close look at that body camera video as they continue to investigate. Quite the end.